One Nation has a fight on its hands, and not the usual one against other parties. It's a battle within. Some One Nation candidates in the upcoming West Australian election are describing their own party as dysfunctional and dictatorial. They're furious that a deal was brokered behind their backs to preference Liberals, and they're refusing to be part of it. The preference deal aims to hand One Nation the balance of power in the state's upper house, in return offering the Liberals an outside chance of clinging to power for a third term. It's a big political gamble that's being watched closely in Canberra, where Pauline Hanson's growing clout has split the coalition. We'll hear from Pauline Hanson herself in a moment, but first, Claire Moody reports from Perth. Not so long ago, this was the scene at One Nation's makeshift party headquarters in Western Australia. Okay, one, two, three, here we go. Great. Buoyed by polls showing One Nation had 13% of the vote, prospective candidates were lining up for service. And soon after, Pauline Hanson flew into town to launch her team. I'm giving the people of this state an alternative to what they've had. Are they truly happy with Colin Barnett and the Liberal Party? Fast forward to this week and cracks are starting to appear. People are perceiving that One Nation is purely trying to get the Liberal Party re-elected. That's not what I joined the party for and it's certainly not what I stand for. Dane Sorensen is a former mining industry executive who's put his hand up to run for Pauline Hanson in a lower house seat and he's furious over a backroom deal done without his consultation. Under the arrangement, the Liberals will preference One Nation ahead of their alliance partners, the Nationals, in the upper house. And in return, One Nation will put the Liberals ahead of Labour in the lower house seats it's contesting. Every candidate from One Nation that I'm familiar with, that I've spoken to, which is most of them, joined One Nation to represent One Nation. Why would we preference, on a blanket basis, a party that we feel has done an abysmal job of running the state? David Miller is also not happy. He's the One Nation candidate for the lower house country seat of Collie Preston. I put my hand up because I've just had enough. And I'm just normal, I'm a construction worker. You know, I'm not rich, I'm not famous, I'm not a politician, first time around. So the thing about the preferences, we weren't told, I wasn't told. I found out by reading the Sunday Times the next day and then social media. Like many other candidates 730's spoken to, the electrician's angry that he's been forced to spend his own money on his campaign, only to shore up support to get One Nation into the upper house. I think they've done this deal, how it looks to me, is to get someone in the upper house at the expense of the people in the lower house. The lower house have to pay for all their own advertising, You've got to pay for your own campaign. Upper house doesn't have to do much. So how do you feel about that then? Less than impressed. How much will this campaign cost you? How long's a piece of string? Well, it's cost me just on $900 for 100 core flutes. The pair are vowing to defy the deal and decide their own preferences. My preference will be going where I decide with my, from my advice and that will come out at the appropriate time. It's not unthinkable that you could have the local candidate handing out their own how to vote cards, their own volunteers, and the party head office sending out a rival set of volunteers to hand out a different set of how to vote cards that does actually honour the Liberal deal. Uh, th we're, we're in uncharted waters here. According to analyst William Bow, the deal's designed to save some key marginal seats in a last-ditch effort by the Liberals to cling to power for a third term. I think a key to all of this is the seat of Wanneroo. That's uh, out on the urban fringe. One Nation have a pretty solid basis of support there. If they can get a strong flow of One Nation preferences in Wanneroo, then perhaps they can pull that rabbit out of the hat and then uh, maybe they can start thinking about you know, a pathway to victory, albeit a very narrow one. But former state Liberal leader Barry McKinnon believes the deal won't be enough to save the Barnett government from defeat by Labor. When there's a swing on against the government, history will show that it swings quite solidly and consistently across the board, particularly the outer suburban suburbs. And so to stop that swing, the One Nation juggernaut, if you want to call it that, may well stop that a bit, but I just doubt that it's going to be enough. West Australian Premier Colin Barnett has spent the week defending the arrangement. I think some of the policies in the 90s were quite extreme. 
um, and there was a, a very strong uh, racial component to policies. Um, that is not something that I or uh, the Liberal Party could ever accept. The preference deal will entail a lot of collateral damage. They will lose, I think, a lot of votes in inner urban electorates, including some highly contested ones. And uh, it's a really dangerous calculation. How successful One Nation will be in the WA election could hinge on its ability to present a united front. Aside from the preference deal, there have been claims of bullying and intimidation of One Nation candidates. No one bullies me. Can you see why others would feel that way? Um, yeah, I can. Yeah, there's been there's been some argy bargy that's been brought to brought to the relevant people's attention. But um, yeah, you know, my I had some fairly heated and strong words about it. Yes. What kind of argy bargy? No, oh, just argy bargy. I'm not prepared to go into personal conversations or exchanges of email. There's been a bit of argy bargy. Yeah. You know? Is the party imploding? Oh, no more than the Liberal Party or the Nationals at the moment. There's problems, but, you know, it's not... I think we're more than capable of, of um, weathering this particular hiccup. Although some lower house candidates have told 7.30 they support the deal, it's not clear what impact, if any, the dissent in the party will have on the election result. Disunity is death for the major parties. One Nation can still be a very fractious concern and still harvest the kind of anti-establishment, none of the above option. There are limits to that, though, and if they're completely tearing themselves apart over the next few weeks, then that really will feed into their vote.